Welcome to this demonstration of the main features of the Omnet++ IDE. This demo shows you how to create, configure, run, and analyze a simulation model in the Omnet++ IDE. The Omnet++ IDE is built on Eclipse. First, we select the Omnet++ perspective, which switches the Eclipse workbench to a layout optimized for Omnet++, and adds Omnet++ specific menu items. We create a new simulation project using the project wizard. This project will hold the files we are going to work with. Let's name the project demo. In this demo, we will create and simulate a queuing network. We will build the network from components already defined in the QAing lib project, so we have to include it in our project's dependencies. We can do so in the project properties dialog. We need to choose the project references page and check the queuing lib project. The next step is to create a new NED file with an empty network using the NED file wizard. We'll start with an empty network. Let's build a closed queuing network with a single source node and three queues connected in a ring topology. Module types are available from the palette at the right side of the graphical editor. We can select the type we want to add, click in the editor to add it and give it a name. Let's add three queues and a source. Now we can connect the submodules with the connection tool. When creating a connection, we choose the gates to be connected from a pop-up menu. The network can be edited in text mode as well. Let's add the last connection in text mode. We'll use Content Assist to write the code. The network needs to be configured before it can be run. Now we'll create an ini file and set the model parameters there. We'll use the ini file wizard to create the file. We choose the network to be simulated. This is a text file which can be edited in both text mode and using forms. Our next task is to assign model parameters that do not have default values. This dialog lists all unassigned parameters and inserts them into the file. First, we choose the inter arrival time and the number of jobs in the source submodule. Inter arrival time will be set to zero, meaning that all jobs will be immediately injected into the queuing network. We want to run the model in two configurations once, with 30, and then, with 60 initial jobs. A special syntax allows us to specify this directly in the ini file. Now we set the service time for all queues in the system. We want to only set parameters that have no default values defined in the NED files. We want to try the model with different queue service times as well, exponential distribution with means 1, 2 and 3, so we specify service time to be a running parameter as exponential dollar service mean equals 1, 3 step 1.
We could also specify that we run each configuration several times with different seeds, but iterating over Noom jobs and service times already generated enough runs for this demo. Turning on the log file generation will allow us to analyze the interaction between the modules later. Specify how long each simulation has to run, in simulation time. Let's check the result in text mode, and save our new INI file. Now we have a network defined in a NED file and an INI file defining open parameters for the system. As a next step, we want to run the simulation from the IDE. We have to create a launch configuration to do this. The simulation program itself is already compiled, and can be found in the QEnglib project. Select the INI file to be used with the simulation. An INI file may contain several configurations. Ours contains only one name general, so we select that. We will use the command line environment to run the simulation. In the INI file we have specified that the simulation should be run with 30 and 60 jobs, and queue service time should be exponential with means 1, 2 and 3. This would result in a total of 6 simulation runs. We want to run each of them, so we specify star, meaning all, as a run number. This is a dual core machine, so we will gain speed if more than one simulation runs at the same time. We set the maximum number of simulations running at the same time to 2. Now we are ready to execute our simulation batch, so we click run. And watch the progress of the simulation batch in the progress view. Simulations completed. Note the files that have been created in the project directory. VEC and SCA files hold the statistics recorded by the simulation. Log files contain a record of each message sending, textual debug messages, and more, and can also be visualized on sequence charts. We can analyze the results now. Let's create a new analysis using a wizard. First, add all generated result files to the analysis. We could specify exact file names or drag files fro, the navigator, but it is now much simpler to use wildcards. The editor lists the matching files below, one vector and one scalar for each run. The files have actually not been loaded into memory, only their contents were scanned. Each time a simulation is run, it receives a unique run ID which contains the configuration, run number, date and time, etc. The second tab displays which files were generated by each run. The third tab presents a logical grouping of the runs. All runs we just did, belong to one experiment name general, the name of the INI file configuration. This default experiment name can be overwritten in the INI file. Every experiment consists of several measurements, which are usually the same simulation model being run with different parameters. Every measurement can be repeated with different seeds to gain statistically trustworthy results, resulting in several replications. Each instance of running a replication receives a unique run ID. We can now switch to the data browsing page. The table displays vectors recorded in all simulation runs. 
we are interested in how the queue lengths change over time, so choose length from the filter combo. The table still includes data from all runs, so let us focus on run 4. There are only three vectors, one for each queue. Let's plot them on a single chart. Now we zoom in a little, and change the plotting style to sample hold. We can apply the mean function, to get a smoothed out version of the chart. We can also store this chart as a recipe, so next time the simulation is rerun, the chart can be created automatically. The dataset page displays recipes used to create charts and diagrams. It contains processing steps applied in top to bottom order. Let us save the analysis. The analysis file will only store the recipe, which files to load, what datasets to use, and what charts to draw from them. Let's open one of the log files, and take a look at the sequence chart. Here you can see the initial 60 messages being pushed into one of the queues. Go to where the first message is first processed by a queue. Zoom out to see more. In nonlinear timeline mode, messages in the same gray area have the same simulation time. Now we switch to linear timeline mode and see the initial messages being sent at zero simulation time. Note that the gray areas will collapse into a single vertical line. Filter for the first message to see how it circulates in the closed network. Switch to nonlinear mode to see the message going around several times. Show where message objects are reused by resending them. This concludes our demo. We suggest you continue exploring the Omnet++ IDE using your own installed copy and gain first-hand experience with the system. Have fun!